Today we're going to dive into material UI form subcomponents. So I will show you how I built this simple form here, and yet it uses um, all of the material UI form subcomponents. So a few examples of those are the form control, form group, the form control label, radio group, and there's even a few more that are inside of this. So stick around and we will discuss all of these and compare and contrast some of them like form control versus form group and when to use, when to use each kind. So it's a super informative video. Here we are looking at the code for our form that I showed previously. And we can see that um, we saw in our form that there's really two main sections on it. So those are actually wrapped, each of those is wrapped in a form control component. Um, then within it, the side, the left side, which is switches, is wrapped in a form group for controlling the layout and the radio group on the right, or the radio buttons on the right are wrapped in radio group. We'll get into the differences between those two components. We'll get into the differences between the form control and the form group component, uh, but we'll really just start from the top here and uh, discuss each one. Normally what I do is I code along with the video to um, kind of show how the steps along the way and how each thing happens, but this is really about the actual components themselves. So I've actually already got it coded um, so it's really just this, this pretty simple form and then a few handlers. That's all that we've got. And I've got a link to um, all the code uh, in the video details. So take a look there if you want to um, have access to this code. So uh, the form control is an interesting and robust component within Material UI's form universe. Um, and I should, I should mention it's often the top level form component within Material UI, because as we see here, I've just got a typical React form. Um, so Material UI does not actually have its own form component. It relies on the React form component. Um, and then form control is often, like I was saying, within that kind of the, a topmost component that will control sections of the form. Sometimes you could, if you had a small form, uh, you could just have a form control and no wrapping form. Uh, depends on what your use case is. So uh, our form control is really all about maintaining state. It's far more about maintaining state than it is about maintaining any kind of uh, layout. So the form control, uh, if I set it to disabled, make sure I save it, and I go over here. Now we can see that all the children of it, of that um, form control are now disabled. So I can tell you um, there's actually several different components within here that are getting that state on them. So let's take a look at those real fast. We have a form label. That was the owns real estate text. We had a form group that wrapped all the switches. And then we had, I think, some helper text at the bottom. Yeah, form helper text. So all of that got that state from the form control. So that's really the purpose of form control. Um, it's got a few other things. For example, you can actually put a handler on it, um, an on-click handler, and uh, or excuse me, an on-change handler, and uh, that has some use, but uh, it doesn't pass the event dot target dot value in the same way as uh, the actual changes on the switches. So just keep that in mind if you ever try to use it. So. Uh, let's talk next about the form group. I'm going to skip over the form label for a moment. The form group and the form control are probably um, the most often confused. Uh, you know, when should I use form control? When should I use form group? So, like I said, form control is about maintaining state. Form group is really just about layout control. So, you can see that I added a prop called row. It's just a boolean, um, true or false. And so when I set it like this, and that set row equals true, that's just shorthand for that. And we see now that the three switch compo the three switches within um, within our form group are in a horizontal layout now. So it's really three form control labels that contain switches. So that's really the purpose of form group. It's not really about state management. Um, there's really not that many props on the form group. That's really the primary one. And I'll add here uh, that in MUI version five, there's a new component called switch, which is um, 
excuse me, stack, uh, the stack component, and its purpose is for handling these one-dimensional layouts. So my opinion would be you probably don't need to use stack within a form because instead you should use this form group component. So um, looking at form control versus form group, uh, you may be wondering, okay, when do I use one? When do I use the other? And to be honest, they'll often be used together because like I said, form control is for the state, form group is for the layout. Um, but one interesting thing, if you Google HTML form group, that's three separate words, you'll actually come back with a field set component often uh, in the Google results. And um, I think that uh, the form control and the form group have kind of blurred the lines between, um, or kind of blurred the lines between the HTML form group. So, um, in I think typical HTML, the group is the form group is often used, uh, perhaps for layout, but even for state management. And so it's kind of broken into two separate things in Material UI. And maybe maybe I'm wrong in my understanding of that in just HTML world, so to speak. But that's the gist that I get. So anyway, keep that in mind that it's not necessarily that Material UI com these components are not necessarily behaving the same as you might expect from their uh, from the similar raw HTML elements. So anyway, um, let's look at this form label here. Well, actually, let's look at the radio group real fast. Not much needs to be said about radio group after we've looked at form group because it's essentially the same thing. And I hate it when I do that. The radio group, um, it's really just a form group intended only to be used with radio buttons as its children. So um, it has that same row prop that we can put on it and that will adjust the layout. There we go. So if you're ever wondering, uh, I'm going to put disabled on here because I've got disabled text at the bottom. So there we go. Now it looks nicely disabled as the form helper text says it should be. So if you're ever wondering when to use form group versus radio group, simple answer is use radio group in the specific case of uh, radio controls and use form group if you're managing layout within a form otherwise. So now let's go back up to the form label. Uh, the form label is uh, pretty straightforward. It's um, really just intended to give us kind of some default styling around a legend, so to speak. Um, like if you had a graph or a chart, you'd have a legend on it. Um, so form component, form label, uh, you'll often see examples in the docs where it's got component legend on it in the MUI docs. So um, form label does have a surprising number of props and it's they're really they're most often related to state. So the form control will maintain state, but let's say you didn't have it wrapped in a form control, you can still add um, disabled or required to the form label itself. It's also got a handful of props related to styling, such as the SX prop. And you can add color through a color prop. So um, pretty, pretty common props here in MUI 5, but um, pretty typical for uh, props for styling here. So let's look at the form control label. That one's a little bit more interesting than the form label because it's actually composed of subcomponents. So you'll have something, you'll have some control component, like in this case, I'm using switch. And um, the form control label also will add a label naturally. So it's kind of a mix. So you see this entire thing right here, this switch and the label of Cindy Brady. Um, that is all from these props here within form control label. So um, it's kind of a mix between the form control and a form label, and uh, but more granular. So it's really, in a manner of speaking, it's the most granular component uh, within the form, the, the most granular, uh, you could say, group within the form, because it's got its, its control component, its label, and it's maintaining the state for those, so, or it's maintaining state and a little bit of layout for those. 
So um, one in particular, one prop in particular that I want to mention with it is, um, let's see if I can remember the name here. Let's see, I think it is, is it position? Nope. I remember the values, but I don't remember the name. But if you're ever in doubt, what you can do is you can, in VS Code at least, you can hover over the component and it will give us this um, link to the API docs here and label placement. That's what I'm going for. So I'm going to put label placement in here and I think the default value is end. Yep but we actually, uh, I'll set it to start just to show what's possible. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So obviously it's a little bit of a mess having only one of them look like that and the other two um, set with label position in, but you can see that Mar Marsha Brady um, got flipped so that the label is to the left instead of to the right. So I'll comment that out. Reset our form layout here. So the final component that I want to mention in depth here is the form helper text. And it's kind of like the legend, except that uh, it's a little less pronounced. By default, the styling is smaller font size, and often you'll see it placed after the control components like this. So like this getting rich or this disabled text. And it's often used for um, more like this disabled text that I've got here. It's often used to show uh, a little bit of help to the user, a little bit of help about your control component. So if you have a disabled control component, you might put, you might conditionally render um, a form helper text down there that in this case says disabled. So there's one other, um, one new form control or form component that I want to mention, which is the form control unstyled. And if you ever just needed a really bare bones, um, basically like a basic HTML form group component, then or form form group element like a field set or something like that, then you might use the form control unstyled component. So I think offhand I don't have an example of it, but I can import it. Okay, here we go. I've already got the import set up. So let's just swap it out for, let's say this here. And I'll remove these props. And we'll see what happens. There we go. Once my slow computer gets uh, it's done compiling, then we'll see what that looks like. It's super bare bones, basically zero styling whatsoever. In fact, it's thrown off, uh, it's a little hard to tell here, but it's actually thrown off our internal styling because it's not, um, it's, I think it's changed from, uh, let's see, Looks like it's changed from a block comp an inline component to a block component there. I had to think about that one for a minute, going back to the basics. Um, anyway, so it's not willing to sit on one line nicely with the other form control. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. So this doesn't really illustrate it that well, but um, if you ever had nice styling on your form control and then you decided that you really wanted to, the, the use case for it is um, if, if you really wanted to just start with a clean slate and custom style your form control without having to disable existing styling and only put your styling in, then you might use the form control unstyled. Then you don't have to worry about disabling the existing form control styling. So those are all the form components that I want to specifically talk about. Um, there is, of course, the input component, the text field component, both within Material UI. 
the input component really it needs its well the text field component too really they need their their own articles or videos on them and I have done a pretty good workup on quite a bit of customization with the text field component and of course the text field component is actually just composed of an input and form helper text and um, kind of depends on the it depends on the um, variant that you have that you're using with your text field but there may be one or two other components within it as well.